Hello everyone! Today we will be talking about Joe. Joe is a very successful businessman. He also enjoys a lot of high-risk activities and he most certainly knows how to do his research before he invests in anything. So then the question becomes, for someone like Joe, does it still make sense to have a balanced and diversified portfolio? Or should he just stick with his individual stocks? Well, let's have a look. Joe is considering investing $2,000 in either stock A or stock B. Both of them are trading at $10 a piece. After doing his usual research, he determines that stock A is a much better value proposition. So he invests his entire $2,000 in shares of stock A, and as a result, he buys 200 shares of it. One year later, the stock goes up by 50% and now it's worth $3,000. Joe is elated. Now, obviously, were he to sell his entire 200 shares at this point in time, he would crystallize that 50% gain and he'd be most certainly happy. Obviously, prices might go up, but they might also correct. And for anything that has shot up in value by 50% over a short time span, it's that much more likely that there will be some pullback, whether the pullback would be 10%, 50%, or 100% of the original gain is unknown. Unfortunately, more often than not, the average individual tends to fall victim to something called recency bias. The belief that things that have happened recently are likely to happen as well in the future. So a lot of people, when they see these massive gains, are very reluctant to sell out of their positions, thinking that the same will occur in the future. Let's consider what would happen if the shares would actually drop in price by 50% back down to the original purchase price. Certainly, Joe wouldn't be too thrilled. However, at the very least, it's still breaking even. But this is not even the worst case scenario. Imagine if shares would not have gone up to begin with. So let's say he would have determined that buying stock B would have been a better choice. And during the exact same time, he puts $2,000 in stock B and decides to buy 200 shares of stock B instead. Stock B actually drops in price by half. After a year, it's only worth $1,000. Stock B might have actually been a really good company, but something might have happened. Maybe the market is not doing great. Maybe an international event occurs uh, that impacts that particular company's bottom line. At this point in time, Joe would have lost 50% of his investment. That would be a much worse scenario than the first option. If he were to sell at this point in time, he would crystallize those losses into real ones. So let's say he sticks around and there is a recovery. And let's assume the recovery goes up by 100% from this price point. So in this case, after two years, the shares of stock B have rebounded back to $10 a share as well. Joe is happy at this point because he's no longer losing money. Be careful, however. Stock B had to only drop by 50% initially to go from 2,000 to 1,000, but had to double from 1,000 all the way back up to 2,000. Obviously, one simple option available to Joe would have been to simply invest in both stock A and stock B. And let's say that's exactly what he did. So in this case, he decides to have a 50-50 portfolio of stock A and stock B. So he invests $1,000 in stock A and $1,000 in stock B. And remember, both stocks are trading at exactly the same price in this case, $10 a share. After a year, the exact same scenario occurs. And at this point in time, Joe is actually flat, right? Stock A has gone up by 50%, stock B has dropped by 50%. At the end of the day, the only thing that has changed is that 75% of his portfolio is made up of stock A and only 25% of the portfolio is made up of stock B. Overall, however, being diversified has enabled him to uh, eliminate the volatility, both on the downside but also on the upside. His overall investment doesn't drop in value because the gains of one make up for the losses of the other. If we were to extrapolate this further to the end of year two, same thing happens. Stock A now goes back down again and stock B recovers. And at the end of the day, he still has $2,000. So by being diversified, he has significantly reduced the risk of him losing money in this scenario. However, he hasn't really made any money either. What if I told you that rebalancing at the end of the first year would actually make a huge difference? Let's have a look at how rebalancing would have worked. So the exact same scenario occurs again. Stock A goes up by 50%, stock B drops by 50%. 
let's see what happens if one actually rebalances. Because obviously right now he has 75% of his investment in stock A and 25% of them in stock B. So we want to rebalance that to 50-50 or as close as 50-50 as we can get with whole shares. We take $1,500, which is stock A, divided by 100, that's the number of shares, and that gives you $15 a share. So now we know that each share that he's going to be selling of stock A is going to give him $15. So we want to sell $500 worth. How many shares is that? Well, 500 divided by 15, that gives us 33.3333 shares of stock A to sell. Now, obviously here you could pick either 33 or 34 shares, because technically speaking, you need 33 and a third. So I'm going to go with 34, just because it's a nicer, rounder number. But 33 would be perfectly fine as well in this case. So then 34 multiplied by 15, that gives us $510. And obviously, if you're looking at 500 divided by 100, shares of stock B, they trade at $5 each, then you're dividing $510 by 5, that allows you to buy 102 shares of stock B. What happens to the shares? Well, at this point in time, Joe has 66 shares of stock A worth $990 and 202 shares of stock B worth $1,010. So notice that combined, they're still worth $2,000, so nothing has changed, she hasn't made any money yet. Okay, but at this point, he owns more or less 50% in stock A and 50% in stock B. Obviously, if you were able to buy fractional shares or if he had bought more shares, you'd be able to get it even closer than this. But this is pretty close instead of, you know, a thousand, a thousand. Let's see what happens once year two comes around and the exact same scenario occurs in the stock market. Stock A drops, stock B goes up in value. Now, his 202 shares of stock B are each worth $10 and his 66 shares of stock A are each worth also $10. In other words, he has $660 worth of stock A and $2,020 of stock B. Combined, that's $2,680, a full 34% rate of return. If Joe wanted to go forward and maintain his investments, this would be the time to yet again rebalance his portfolio to bring it back in line to the original allocations of 50% in stock A and 50% in stock B. The math is relatively straightforward here. Simply take the $2,680 divided by two, that gives you $1,340 in each investment. Then you take the $1,340 divided by 10, which is the share price, that gives you 134 shares of each. And then finally, you take 202 minus 134, which tells you that you need to sell 68 shares of B and conversely buy 68 shares of A. He does that and now he owns 134 shares of A and 134 shares of B. Combined, they're still worth $2,680 or again, a 34% gain from his original investment. The take home for today is that diversification reduces risk and volatility as we've seen. And then rebalancing allows you to sell high and buy low, essentially making money in the process. I'll be covering diversification and rebalancing as well as pretty much all other personal finance topics in future videos. So make sure to check those out. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments down below. And as always, have a great day.